Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be reacting to perhaps my favorite singer of all time, and that is Canadian bass baritone, Gerald Finley. A bit of a backstory on Don Giovanni. It is an opera in two acts by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart with libretto by Lorenzo da Ponte. It is a dramma giocoso, blending comedy, melodrama, and supernatural elements. It was premiered by the Prague Italian Opera at the National Theatre, now called the Estates Theatre, on the 29th of October, 1787. Don Giovanni is one of the most famous operas of all time. It is part of that trio of operas by Mozart and da Ponte, Le Nozze di Figaro, The Marriage of Figaro, Così fan tutte, and Don Giovanni. In this aria, Don Giovanni is trying to seduce Donna Elvira's maid. He's serenading her as he plays his mandolin. This is Gerald Finley singing De Vieni alla Finestra. I'm so excited to analyze what's going on in this video because there's so much to unpack. First of all, one of the most beautiful and powerful singing voices I've ever heard. I've always loved Gerald Finley. Everything he seems to touch turns to gold. Just so, so resonant and so beautiful. I think it really fits in with the character so well. The music in this aria is very beautiful. It's very sincere which is interesting because Don Giovanni is very not sincere. He's sort of a trickster. He will do whatever it takes to get what he wants. Yet the music in this seems so genuine. What you'll notice about listening to Mr. Finley is that everything is resonant, all parts of his range. So if we're singing sort of in the lower end, somewhere in the middle or near the top, everything is resonant, everything is controlled. It's one voice through the whole aria. Let's listen to the opening one more time. The first thing that really jumps out at me is how well he's singing the pickup notes. So a pickup note is sort of a shorter note that leads to a note that's maybe higher or maybe it leads to the downbeat. So in this case, de vieni, the de is the pickup note. And I say this to singers all the time. If we undersing the pickup in preparation for the higher or the more important note, then we're setting ourselves up for failure. And what Gerald does really well here is he sings all the pickups very beautifully. De vieni. It's not de vieni, it's de vieni. Because we're in D major, the first two notes, A, is the fifth scale degree, and we go up to D, and that is scale degree one. So if we don't get the tuning right as we approach one, then we're pretty much toast. This goes for all of your high notes. If you're singing a high note and you're approaching it from below, you wanna feel as though you're kind of going above it and then down upon it. You don't wanna ever feel like you're reaching for your high notes. <laughs> I think when he sings volio, that is the most beautiful tone a human being could ever produce. I, I'm convinced there's nothing more beautiful than that. That should be illegal. Thankfully it's not, but it's just so, so good. So in this, in this part he's saying, if you refuse to give me comfort, I'll die. And what Mozart does, which is really exciting, is he gives us a bit of a crunchy harmony on the word to die. It might not so much be a crunchy harmony. We're not really looking at, you know, atonal music theory here, but Mozart gives us an A sharp 
which is a bit of a dissonance, a bit of tension on the word morire, to die. Composers in the classical era and the Baroque era and the Renaissance era, they do this as well. They, they bring out certain moments of tension, of dissonance. J.S. Bach, for example, if he's writing music for Jesus dying on the cross, he might give us a diminished seventh chord. Just something that's a little different to stick out and, and sort of emphasize the point. <laughs> What I love about this is that he's using the diction in a seductive way. It's not overpronounced, it's not over the top, but he's using the rolled R's, for example. He says, se nege meditar qualche ristoro. So he's using the rolled R's in this case to add to that seduction. And now that we go into the second half of this aria, we're going to see more of the sublime Mozart. What you have to do when you're singing this part in particular is be as sublime, as quiet, as seductive, as beautiful as you can. It's almost like Don Giovanni is using every weapon in his holster, everything he's got, he's throwing at this girl to try and get her to sleep with him. That's what we're talking about. This this is, is so incredible. The first verse is maybe a bit more literal, whereas the second verse, if we if we sort of chunk this up into to two verses, the second half, this is about sex. This is all about sex. So so this is really where he's laying it on thick. I mean, the first thing he says in this pianissimo, so so quiet, the, the dynamic level is is astounding. You have a mouth sweeter than honey. I mean, it doesn't get more sexual than that. So we've established that he's using the rolled R's in quite a dramatic way in the first half. And in the second half, what he's doing is he's using the voiced consonants to really add to that seduction. So piu kel miele. So what a voiced consonant is, is a consonant that you can sing on. So M, for example, is a voiced consonant. Miele. So he's he's taking advantage, he's singing as much as possible. And that's what we really want here. Zucchero means sugar. And the way he's singing this sweetly is he's having a very subtle tss sound at the beginning, and then he's taking advantage of the double C. Zucchero. And what's one of the most seductive ways that we can sing? It's by singing as legato as possible. If we can be singing all the time with no breaks, without any choppiness, it's going to come across even more sexual, even more powerful, and even more seductive. If you want to improve your legato singing, and I recommend everybody sing as legato as they can, what you can do is just take out the consonants in your text. Just sing it on vowels. If I was learning this aria, for example, I might just go, ah, 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 
Just do it on an ah or do it on an oo or a, whatever vowel you want. And then you can go kind of up a level and you would just go sing the vowels of the words. And then when you get comfortable with that, then you can add the consonants back in, but do it one step at a time. As we wrap up this aria, which is actually a canzonetta, you're going to see and hear Don Giovanni make his final point. It's kind of like the final argument in a courtroom. Non And we give the mandolin player all the credit in the world. Good job. That's a very, I can imagine a very stressful thing to play. You know, you're singing this very famous aria and then you have to play it along with the singer. So this is, uh, this is very difficult, I'm sure. Congratulations to the mandolin player. You made not a single error, at least to my ears. At this point, he's saying, don't be cruel. Come and see me. Let's do this thing. And in typical opera fashion, the way it's phrased or the way it's set up is, is if you don't do this, if you don't love me, I will die. Opera is always so over the top. And one thing Gerald Finley is doing unbelievably well is he's not letting any consonant, any vowel or any note go to waste. He's using everything that Mozart has given him. I want you to listen and watch carefully to what he's about to do next. The word is lasciati, and what he's going to do is prepare the L and the A. Ah. So the L is gonna be ready, uh, it's actually gonna be pitched, and the A, ah, the next vowel, is going to be sitting there waiting. And the reason why singers have to do this is because there's not enough time in the moment to make these adjustments. So on the breath, then you're all ready to go. Everything is set up. All you have to do is sing it. And for mio, and I think this goes for any time you have an E vowel, it might be different for other voice types, but I know for, for baritones and for basses, an E vowel can be tricky sometimes. What I do know is that we want to avoid an E vowel being too east-west. Mi, io. We want to think of it more north south. Mio. And what I do for e vowels is I think more e, 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 e. So I would go, lasciati al men veder mio bel amore. Mio. And I think that's what he's doing here. He's not thinking mio, because that's going to spread and that's going to make all the muscles in your cheeks clench up. He thinks mio. Lasciati al men veder. I'm going to teach you a very niche but very important lyric diction tool and I want you to use it every time you sing in Italian but it's called raddoppiamento and what that is is the lengthening of the initial consonant so for this example I'm going to use bel bel amore he sings bel amore almost like there are 17 b's in the word bel instead of just one so what that does is it helps us to emphasize the the word we can do it all the time we could do it at the beginning of this phrase non esser gioia mia con me crudele lasciati if we just do it as a single lasciati then it doesn't have that same level of drama. It's not opera enough. So you can do this kind of thing in Italian opera, in French opera, in German opera, in English opera, whatever you're singing, look at the text. How can you use it to your advantage? Because Gerald Finley certainly uses every 
ounce of text in this aria to make it more seductive, to make it more sexual, and to just add to his character even more. That's it for today's video, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you to Gerald Finley for your incredible artistry and your attention to detail in this aria. I know for a fact he does this kind of singing through the entire opera and through his entire career. He has spent so much time looking at the tiny, tiny details, and that's why he's the best. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And of course, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.